Hello everyone, this is Marie from Skeletorama again. Welcome back to my channel. Okay, but how, should, how is everyone um, doing good? So since the last time um, I did a video and I was thinking, oh, I've got this idea to do books. Well, I, I did the idea to do books here. So um, this kit is on my Etsy, it's available now. It is called Historic Manuscripts and Books Kit 1. And I'm gonna kind of show you how, it's, it's pretty straightforward, but I did do something kind of a little different as far as the covers go. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. And it's got not only books, but it's got you know, cabinet cards, it's got all the, all the stuff you might find on a desk, right? Um, because, well, number one, I had all this space to fill, so I thought, why not fill it with cool stuff, right? So, um, anyways, these are actual digitized versions of real historic manuscripts and texts um, that came courtesy of the National Library of Scotland. And so we've got here, and I, I put what they were just in case you were curious. Um, so this is an Irish grammar book. It's in Irish Gaelic and English because it was written for somebody who spoke English to teach them Irish grammar. Um, and then this is a Encyclopedia Britannica. It's one of the like supplemental type volumes um, where it's got all the different copper plate illustrations of different sciencey bits and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, this book spine does not match this because this, I couldn't find the actual spine for this. So just at that scale, you're not gonna be able to read it very good, but there you go. So just so you know, I didn't, I didn't not know I did that, right? Um, and so we have these two here. This is the, uh, Sweetheart Breviary and the Black Adder Prayer Book from the mid 1400s. These are both illuminated manuscripts. This is an illuminated one with pictures. This has some pictures, but they're kind of, I think they call it marginalia. Um, it's kind of in the margins and they do fancy business, but, um, these are cool. They had like different religious calendars and when's your feast days and what your masses are going to be and different prayers and stories and stuff. Um, these are poems and songs, Nagalic, they're in Gaelic, um, handwritten by Alan Stewart in the 1770s, the, the person who actually wrote them, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and of course my postcards, um, and then these two here. We've got the Encyclopedia Britannica volume of maps. Um, you know, it's a lot of these pages are out of order because of course it's not just maps, maps and nothing but maps. It's got other stuff. And I was like, I don't want the other stuff. I want the maps. So um, what I did is I just kind of pulled out the maps. So, so we had those. And then this is probably my favorite one here. This is a journal of um, Dougal McNichol. It's like a travel journal. He had gone traveling about. Um, and it's from 1813 and it is also written in Gaelic, in, in Gaelic. And this is the only one that I have the pages. They're actually in order. So if you could read them, um, at that size, you would notice that it, it's continuous. Um, the watercolors actually were at the end of that volume, but this one probably took the longest for me to make because as I'm bringing these in, I have them in, in regular size. And so I'm, I'm seeing them and I'm putting them down, making them small. I kept getting distracted because <laughs> I kept trying to read this. Um, so I don't speak Gaelic, but I'm learning it. And so I knew just enough words that I, I would pick it out and be like, oh, they're at Antai, they're at somebody's house. Cool, you know, all these different things. But I, do I know what it's meant? Not really, <laughs> you know. So it's kind of like um, when I learned Spanish, when I learned German. If, if we're going to have a conversation after we exchange pleasantries and it doesn't involve going to the beach with your uncle, you know, I, we're done. We're done talking because I just, I don't know where to go from there kind of thing. And it's, it's the same as this. I can piece together little bits of it, just enough to make it kind of fascinating. So I think one of the things I might do at some point is, is print this out real size. And, and once I start learning more, see if I can't translate it because that's how they did it for us in German, help us learn German. And of course, probably the biggest hurdle to that is, is Gaelic spelling. So, um, for example, and I'll, I'll see if I can put this up on here, otherwise it'll make no damn sense. But, um, so the National Library of Scotland, if you say it in Gaelic, is Yawrlaun Noishuncha Nahalaba. So I'll put that up here and you can see that if you were to just read that cold, you would mangle the bejesus out of it. So it's, it's kind of hard to, um, Phonetically, as an English speaker, try to, to puzzle it out because you're gonna you're gonna be wrong. You're just gonna be wrong. Um, so I'm, I'm learning little bits and annoying the living crap out of everybody around me whilst doing so, which is a side benefit. I enjoy that. So, anyways, so what we're gonna do is we are going to make some of these today. So here I've got the little books put together, and 
So the way this differs from how I did them before is in theory, we're actually kind of going to be making a book cover like you would really make a book cover for a regular size book, right? Um, just because I thought, you know, I bet that would look better instead of having just, you know, it's, it's sturdier. Um, you don't have to have everything glued together. And if you're going to open it, you want to be able to see like the front page. Some of these have really pretty marbled. Where's that marbled one? Right here. They have really pretty marbled end papers. You'll be able to see that, you know. So we're going to do those. And then I'll scoot these a little bit to the side just so you can see we're going to do all the other stuff too. Well, not all of it in real time because that takes a bit, but this is all the little stuff for the desk. So um, a few of them like the cabinet cards here. You have these are like old advertisement type, not really business cards, but like a business flyer sort of thing that you would you would give somebody back in the 1800s um, with your your business on it or railroad stuff, whatever things. They're designed to be folded and glued so that they have a front and a back. Um, same with the postcards here. And then all of these, the handwritten ones, these are the actual front and back of, you know, what was on that page. So any of the, you know, where it's like crinkled or where there's a nick in it, they'll match up um, when you put them together. And then I think there's like one more here. The rest of these are just kind of invoices. Oh, this one does too. Um, little checks, all kinds of little weird stuff. And I did put some pictures because in the picture of the secretary that um, Laura Carson did, it had like a, a picture in a frame and I thought, I want a picture in a frame, right? But uh, all mine are too big. So I made a couple of small ones. This one has its own little frame. These ones, maybe you have a frame, I don't know. Um, I don't, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> design fail, whatever. So we're gonna do that and here I'll show you. See if I can bring these up kind of close. Um, these are cabinet cards. Let's see, here's one of the little advertisements. And where's all my postcards at? I've got a bunch of them in here. Here's one. And these are the same postcards. They're from um, either the Ireland kit or the Scotland kit. So if you have those postcard kits, just know you can take the, the JPEG of the, um, the page that they're on. You can shrink them down super small and make your own little postcards too. Um, so that's all those. And then of course, these are like the poem. See, you've got the front and the back. So that way you can have some stuff that can move around. So you're not putting it, say, leaning against this and then and wanting to hide the back because it's just plain paper. So anyways, let's put all this stuff back in its little home here that I had it. And this, this makes a pretty decent amount of stuff. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to make too. Um, I'm gonna put the little books in here. Eee, all right, and I will show you how we do these. So we will do we'll do this one here since it's on top. <clears throat> so with these, obviously, you cut them out with scissors, or if you have trouble doing a straight line with scissors like I do, you can use paper trimmer. Now I wouldn't use it on all these tiny bits, but I definitely do use it on the pages just to make my life easier. So line this up and, and do I still get it perfect where there's no little white edge? Um, no. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the day. All right. So bring this here. And these ones are, I want to say they're about an inch and a quarter high. Um, and the smaller ones are about an inch high. Now for the purposes of that specific kit of the um, secretary, the, even the small ones won't kind of fit. Those shelves are really tiny, so they won't fit like this. Um, it would have to be, those things are maybe like three quarters of an inch high, those shelves. They can definitely lay down on their sides. And then the larger ones that I did, like the atlases and things, I knew they weren't going to fit in there because I want them to be laying down or open on the desk or what have you. But they do fit if you if you make like a bookcase for, you know, the 112 scale stuff. It'll, it'll fit in there just fine. All right, so there's that one, Watch the scissors. All right, and so again, tonic scissors, make sure your logo's facing away from what you're cutting if you don't want the little micro serrations. I'm just gonna cut the ends of these poorly. Wow, okay, it's gonna be like that today, is it? I think, I think my work permanently fried my brain this week at my day job. This, this is a painful, painful week, okay. Very busy. There we go. 
Yeah, not even, not even close. Love it. Okay. Same with this one here. So these two together um, are going to make up the guts of the one book because I wanted it to have a decent sized spine, you know, because you're not going to have, say, a big weighty science tome that has the, you know, scaled width of a magazine or something, right? You want it big. And so I made them big. Uh, but to do so, we're going to have to attach these two together, which we will do after we get them kind of folded and stuff. So we got these guys, and let's go ahead and cut our book cover out. This one I usually just do with the scissors and go along this. So what this outside border that you see, it's, it's like a tea stain paper um, that I use just so when it makes up kind of the inside edge, it, you know, you don't have to fiddle with it too much. But we're actually going to make some sort of like inserts and, and cover them with this. This is going to be our our paper that we're going to cover our book with. So there's that. All right. So what I'm going to do is I like to use the bending pliers. You don't have to. Um, you can just, you know, fold the stuff over. I do it just because it, it gives me a shot at being somewhat straight. Um, I use a laser printer for mine. And no, do I use the name brand ink? Are you kidding me? No. Have you priced that stuff? Wow. It's insane. So yeah, I use kind of not the name brand ink, but the only thing that bugs me sometimes is when I do things like this, um, since toner is a plastic, essentially, um, you know, it'll kind of crack. And that's, that's why these sides look like this. It's, it's the toner stuff. So if you did this with inkjet printer, you wouldn't have that problem. Um, or if, you know, you weren't so cheap that you bought the, the generic toner but I don't have a house to mortgage to get a set of toner. So there we go. All right, so we're gonna do the same on the sides. And just line it up. And I like to do this nice and crisp with the um, bone folder as well, because A, when I go to put my um, chipboard in there, it's gonna you know, be easier to see where I need to do that. And B, it's just gonna look nicer, makes it real easy to, to pull these over when you're when you're covering it. All right, so there we go. So we have this leg of this. And I had to adjust the lighting a little bit because I'm like, that's a little dark. But um, so what we're gonna use to make up our book, when we do the regular ones where it's just a cover that you stick on, and I use a medium weight chipboard, this is lightweight chipboard, so it's half the width. I want to say this is one thirty-second of an inch. Yeah, like this is going to help me, but yeah, it's probably one thirty-second of an inch. Um, so it's nice and light. You can use um, cereal box packaging, packaging from you know crackers, whatever, whatever you have that you want to recycle will work as well because it's it's going to be about the same thickness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece and my handy dandy ruler, and I'm gonna measure it and see, okay, how wide is this? I would give you like, oh, cut it this and this. I thought about doing a template, but you know, if you bend it even slightly differently, it's gonna throw it off. So it's easier to just do it um, from scratch. So this is gonna be about two and a quarter-ish, just shy of that. Um, and it's also gonna be about one and one, two, three eighths. In theory, I'll get those um, fractions correct the next time I say them. They will probably completely change. My apologies for that, but I'm kind of an idiot. So anyways, um, one and one, two, three eighths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of this chipboard to that size. It will be trimmed down as well. Um, thing I like about this ruler is it's see-through. So I can go, here's one inch and one, two, three eighths. Ta-da! And so I can take my pencil and I'm gonna mark it, and I'm gonna go up to about, uh, I would say two and one eighths on that because we're gonna we're gonna need to leave some little gaps for things. So here we go, and I'm gonna go this way here, which is I can totally tell that's not straight, but that's fine. Okay, so we're gonna cut this out, 
and this doesn't matter if there's the micro serrations on it because you're not going to see it. Okay, so that is going to be my, you know, core of my book cover. So I'm going to put it in here to make sure I didn't mess up the measurements because that wouldn't be weird, right? And I kind of did. So, Jesus, really? Ugh. What did I tell you? Okay, well, I know the length is right, so let's try it again. All right. There's one inch. Did I measure that wrong? I probably measured that wrong. Oh, of course I did. It's one and three eighths. One, two, three eighths. Okay. So there's one and one, two, three eighths is down here. There we go. Stupid. Okay. Yeah. Again. Here, let me teach you how to make things from scratch. And obviously I can't measure anything ever accurately. All right. I'm just going to go straight up from here because I know this part was okay. And we'll go this way. And we'll try this again, shall we? All right. That's why it's good to, to hold it up <laughs> and make sure that's better. Okay, that's what I did. Um, all right. So then I'm going to take this. I'm going to flip this over here like this. And I'm going to put it on my little book. And I'm going to kind of mark where the spine is on this. Because we're going to cut that too. Okay. So that's where my spine is. Um, you can use something to make sure it's straight. I'm going to live on the edge here and just cut. All right. So there we go. So I got my spine and everything cut. Now, when we put this together, just like with a regular book, when you go to, to fold it shut, you want there to be a little bit of a gap between your spine and your front and your back covers, right? So I'm going to put this here. I'm going to put this here. And I'll put this here. This is exactly, obviously, where it was. So what I need to do is I need to take a little bit off of either of these for that gap. So I want to say this is about a sixteenth of an inch. I mean, it's not much at all. So I would say about a little bigger than the thickness of, of your paper. Um, just because I want it to have a little bit of extra room for things to move. Okay, so I'm going to put these here. And this here. And put this in the center. Okay, and now I have that little gap. Bring this up where you can see it. Okay, so I've got that little gap. Um, when it's glued in, you'll see the gap's not quite as big as it looks like it is, but that's what you want so that your book will actually close for you. Okay, so now we're going to take our little front and back covers and our spine. We're going to take our glue and we're going to glue it to the inside of this. And what I do is I kind of fold up, see where I've got this folded? I fold it up here and then I pick it up and I kind of line it up with these just to make sure they're straight. And that's one of the reasons, again, that I use the bone folder to make the nice crisp edge so I could see it. And do the same with this side. And these are super duper duper easy. They're a little fiddly, um, but in reality they're very, very easy. All right, so there's this here like so. Okay, so we've got those, and then I'm going to take the spine piece and I'm going to put it right in the middle so that I've got an equal distance between both of the covers. While my glue bottle makes rude noises at everyone. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I have it like this in my book. So now I want to cut the edges here so that I can fold the paper over. So you want to cut the corners. You do not want to go all the way here because then you're going to end up seeing it's going to poke out. It's going to look bad. So I leave just about, you know, again, the width of my material because that's how I would do if I was doing a real book cover. Um, about like that. We're going to cut these and this one and this one. Okay, these. And then we are going to fold our paper over. So just like I would with a real book, I'm going to start with the long edges and do this. And of course, since I do junk journals, I do actually have videos on how to make a real book cover and how to bind a real book. If you're interested in seeing those, this is just the same thing on a very small scale. Okay, so I got a little bit of glue in there. And I push my two sides down. Now, if I just pull this over, it's going to poke out a bit. So what I do is I take my nail, just like I would when I'm doing a real book, and I push that corner down. And I push this corner down so that it's 
going down the edge of that material and then out, right? And I do both sides because usually by the time I get to the other side, I forget and I don't do it on the other side. All right, so now we're gonna put glue on this one and bring it over. And same with this one. Oh, get that right there. Top on that so it doesn't make more rude noises and bring this one over. Okay, so there we go. So this is, this is also how you would cover a regular book if you're doing it in paper, if you're doing it in fabric. Um, you know, binding them in leather obviously is very different, but um, ta-da, okay? So now in order to fold our book, you just wanna kinda of take your fingernail, very gently push that paper and encourage it to be in that little ditch on both sides and voila, we have a book cover. Okay, ta-da. All right, so we can set this aside for now and we will turn our attention to this. So with these, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ink the edges, of course, because I want my book to look like an antique book and if you have just the white edge of the paper, you know, it's gonna kind of spoil that illusion for you a little bit. So just a little bit on the edges and that will hide any of your less than perfect cutting as well which is why I ink everything. <laughs> okay. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not doing some kind of special finish to it. I'm just, just hiding the white edges. All right, so when I do these, I'm gonna go ahead and accordion fold these, right? So I have them as if they were the book so everything's right side up. Your very first page is going to be your page that covers your cover, right? So when you're folding them, you need to take it and go in this direction first, okay? Because this is gonna sit here like this, okay? And then when you get to the other one, your back page is gonna do the same thing, right? So I always start accordioning it from accordioning. Yeah, that's a fun word. Okay. I start folding it from the back end because I do mess it up all the time. <laughs> I end up with this going the wrong way. It's like, oh, well, crap. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fold these, put you guys on fast forward while I do that. Um, and I will join you back in a sec once they are, the first folds have been done to them. So now these are done in the little accordion fold and you can kind of see where we're going to attach these two together. But I wait until I have them both folded and um, ready to go before I do this because otherwise it gets a little unwieldy. So this is the fiddly part. Now you can just take this and fold, 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 fold and, and glue together and, and you're probably going to end up with a spine that kind of steps and, and slopes off in a different direction. So the next step that I do is I take each of these and I fold them up like this. And I will do the bone folder because you definitely want these ones nice and, and crisp. Um, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna fold it back here. I'm not gonna completely trust what I've done with the, the folding pliers. I'm gonna make sure this is like this. You see how straight that is and, and whatnot. And sometimes I'll be a little bit off and then I make sure it's laying straight, the paper's laying straight, and then I do the bone folder to get that new crease. And I'm just gonna keep doing this all the way down. And see how I'm just a little bit off. And I'm gonna do that for both of these. So once again, I will not bore you with this in real time, because it does take a few minutes. And I will speed it up a bit.
now we have the nice uh, crisp folds and stuff. If you're just folding over without using the, the pliers or doing kind of preliminary fold to begin with, you can do all those steps at the same time. But just spending that few minutes will really, really help your book be straight. And it's, it's nothing more frustrating than doing these. Normally when I would get these kinds of things with kits, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother to do them um, that way because, yeah, I would always get frustrated because they always kind of skewed off at an angle until I kind of figured out what I was doing wrong. And that was definitely user error. So now I'm going to fold this up like so. And here is chance number two. So see, even though I did that, see how those kind of slide out a bit? Right? We don't want that. So this is where I take this and then I line it up and get this nice and square and I put it down and then I press with the bone folder on both these sides again to try to keep that nice and straight. So I'll do the same with this one. Fold this up like so. And this one came out pretty straight. But there's still a couple of them that are kind of wonky. So just kind of square it up a bit. Make sure it looks good. And then hit both of these sides. All right, so this is the front. So that's the part that's gonna be attached to the book itself. So now we're gonna glue these together into blocks first, then we'll glue these two blocks together at the end. Again, it just, it makes for a, a much easier um, putting it together. So I'm gonna do these two pages to each other here. Okay, because this is going to make my first page of my book. And then same thing, I'm just going to kind of put a little bit of glue, fold these over, some more glue. It doesn't take much, and you don't want too much because it, it can make your pages kind of a little warped and, and whatnot. And this one. Now this we're going to be left with, with one sticking out on either end like a big T, right? Which is exactly what you want. So this here, make sure we're square. Do the same with this. So this is my back cover page. So, and of course, you know, I have these folded correctly, so it's it's pretty obvious to me which ones I'm going to glue together, but I still double check myself because, yeah, it would not be unheard of for me to, to mess something up like that. And the last one. All right. And again, making sure it's square and pressing it down real good. And now we have our front and our back pieces. So here's our back page. And here's our page that's going to connect with this book. Same here, front. So this page is going to connect. We're going to glue these two pages together. So what I do is I'll take this one. And this one I do try to get a little bit up, you know, fairly close to the edge just because they're going to be a page, right? Um, and then I take this one. And I line these two up real good so that they meet there, kind of press them, and then I fold the whole book over and square the whole book again before the, the glue has a chance to dry and, and dry with my book being lopsided. I'm going to just kind of hold that for a minute, let that really grab, and boom, there's your, there's your guts to your book right there. Okay, and if you glue it like this, you can glue it so that your book will stay open like this. Um, since the glue I use does have a water base, it's going to make my pages kind of curl a little bit. Um, it's, you can't really avoid it. So once it's dry, you just kind of go in there and sort of flatten them out and un uncurl them because it's just the nature of, of the glue doing that. But we have our little book thing. So this is going to fit inside here. And leaves a little bit of room for the spine, but, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm still a little wonky, but I, I don't think I've made one of these that isn't a little wonky. It's just my nature. Um, so now we can put our book inside here. So before I do that, of course, what do I like to do? I like to ink the pages. So I sort of do the edges of these. You can do it now. You can do it when it's in the book. It's just easier for me to do it now. Just kind of make sure everything's looking good. You know, why don't I just do all of them? Oh, there we go. Okay. So there we go. So I'm going to put this in the book. So the key is look at your book. Make sure you're doing it right side up. <laughs> okay, so here's our spine. That's right side up. Here's our front page. This is our uh, Encyclopedia Britannica dictionary thing. And so it's going to go in here like this. So generally what I do is I kind of get it lined up so that the spine is to the back. 
and that this is equal. And then I will open the front cover, hold this front page down. There, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. That's why I made this as large as I did. So if you're slightly crooked, it's not going to look terrible. But I take and put glue here and I just shut the book and then do the same thing. Make sure that I'm centered up and down quickly before it, it holds too much. And then I open the book up again. And so now I've got the spine in the back part to do. So a little bit of glue on the spine and a little bit on this back page. And same thing, I just close the book. I tried when I very first started putting these together, you know, lining the, um, the end page up very carefully and it, it did not work out the best. <laughs> but see, it's just fine. And of course my husband has to go out there and open the garage door. Really dude. <sighs> so anywho, this is how we put our books together. Ta -da! And then for the rest of the things, of course, just cut around the edges. Um, if it's like this one here, you just fold it. That I don't bother with the little folding thing. I just fold it in half, but you fold it and glue it and you get these little things. So that it's that simple. And this can add a lot of extra stuff to the desk area. So it gives us a lot more stuff to play with. So I hope you enjoyed the little, little quickie on how to do the books. Like I said, the kit is available now in my Etsy shop, Skeletorama. It is the, oh, what did I call this again? I think I'd remember these. You know, I'm the one that names them. Historic Manuscripts and Books Kit 1. Yes, I will do more kits um, at some point, but these do take quite a while to make um, digitally. But, you know, they had so many cool ones that, yeah, I definitely have to make more of these and have them where you can open them. See, this is one where I just like, wow, I really didn't do that good, did I? But you know, just trim it off and, and go on with it. This is when I had the the extra page in the front. And so I threw all the maps off because they're supposed to be, where's my other map one? This one? Nope. Oh, I didn't put it together. Well, that's, that's how I noticed. <laughs> so I'm like, wait a minute, you're supposed to be able to open this and see, you know, the world, not the world, and then turn for the rest of the world. So yeah, anyways, I fixed those. But, um, so the little kit makes all this stuff here to go on the desk. Um, and so the next time I come back, I'm going to see if I can't find um, something, a solution for the top of the desk, a couple other things. And we're going to make some little bottles um, because it's going to have like apothecary type stuff um, in there as well. So that's going to be coming next week. That I already have a kit for, so don't wait for that. But Anyway, so that's what we'll do, and then we will finish up the desk, and then following after that, we'll be making the desk except out of wood and seeing how that works. So um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you later. Hey, Bye.